If you're like most tennis players, your forehand is your favorite shot, and you probably hit more winners and play with more confidence with the forehand than any other shot. But you probably also make more mistakes. And you know, it's commonly stated in tennis that the forehand is the easiest shot to learn, but the hardest shot to actually master. And in this lesson today, I'm going to give you three simple tips that are going to help you tune up your forehand so that you can be aggressive and confident and also consistent with it. And if you stick around until the end, we have a free gift for you that's not only going to help you build your modern forehand, but it's going to help you with every stroke in the game. In today's lesson, I have a student of mine, Randy, who's going to be here, and he's been having trouble with his forehand. And we're going to go through a series of drills that are going to help tune his forehand up and give you some great insight on how to do the same for yourself. So one of the great things about the forehand is the amount of freedom that is actually in the swing so we can generate tremendous racketed speed and have a whole lot of fun with it. But it also lends itself to getting out of tune and mistiming balls. So we're going to work with Randy today on how to find the timing and, and, and get your forehand back in tune so you can begin to really play it with tremendous confidence once again. Okay. So the first thing I want Randy to do is come back and really focus on creating a, a professional unit turn. And we see all high performance players do this in modern tennis. And so the key to that is to have your non-dominant hand in control of the racket in the ready position so that when the ball comes, Randy, you automatically turn your shoulders and take the racket back as a unit. So go ahead and prepare, turn and step out, good. So we want to make sure that there's no early separation of the hands in the preparation phase of the forehand. And it's from this position that Randy can adjust his feet and adapt to the ball and he's really ready to enter into the swing. And it's this movement that creates that unified rotation that sets up the forehand to have a tremendous amount of power and coordination. So once Randy gets into his unit turn and he's getting set up for the ball and we're going to assume that he's in position to play the ball, his left hand is going to come away and it is going to stretch and is going to stretch parallel to the baseline. You're going to see that most professional players are going to have that non-dominant arm stretching parallel out to the baseline and that is going to keep Randy in his turn and set up the coordination for the rotation back into the ball. And when you do this, I want you to feel like you accentuate this position and stretch it. We don't want to minimize it or, or, or keep it sort of minimal in a way. We want to feel like we exaggerate it and really get a good strong stretch. Now, the reality is, is that he's not going to be there very long. That stretched movement is going to actually be quite active. It's going to move, actually pass through there. He's not going to be out there waiting, waiting, waiting. It's simply going to be a release, a stretch, and then it's going to become a pull after that. Does that make sense? So once Randy is into that stretch, what that's really doing is setting him up to rotate the body into the contact point. So what's really going to happen is the non-dominant hand is actually going to be the catalyst that's going to create this rotation. And it is actually going to pull away as the racket's dropping. So as once the racket gets to the bottom, the left hand is already clearing and opening the body. So the body is clearing out of the way and is actually drawing or pulling the swing into contact. So the non-dominant hand is actually leading this, this movement. And it's really going to help you create the well-timed, well-coordinated rotation into the shot. And when the left hand is coming, coming in, it's not going to come into you. It's actually going to pull away in a semicircle and then come into you. And at this point in time, as you're coming into contact, you'll see that almost every player has got a firm hold in that left hand and is actually holding still. So its role now is to counterbalance the swing and, and, and stop the body from moving so that the energy of rotation can transfer right through the swing, right through the hitting shoulder, and the non-dominant hand is holding the balance. And then, of course, later on it will resume control of the racket again. So if you can incorporate the non-dominant arm and hand meaningfully into your forehand, it can really sort of frame the whole shot. It can organize and coordinate the beginning. It can help you line up the middle and it can help draw you into contact and it can also give you a guide as you hold balance for your follow through. So it's a very, very important ingredient to develop the modern forehand with the non-dominant hand in control. Keep it on a little longer. Yeah, make it come all the way back. Here? Yeah. That more back? A little bit, yeah. Ready? Go. Good. That's it. Feel that one? Feel how more that was more feel, feel that was more elastic? Yeah. 
forehand like that all day. The last piece we're going to focus on in today's video to help you tune up your forehand is the contact point. And if you do not know where your contact point is, <laughs> then when you're receiving the ball, you're just going to be guessing. And your timing is going to suffer and you're going to be inconsistent. So we're just going to focus on the medium height ball today in this particular lesson. And I want Randy to, to simulate playing a forehand and then stop where he thinks he wants to make contact in his swing. Okay. And that looks pretty good. He's got a vertical racket face, the racket slightly below his hand. It's a very supportive position where the hand, the wrist, elbow, shoulder, everything is behind the racket. And you can actually see the back of his strings. And his shoulder's in a really natural position where he can generate power in a natural range through the ball. So Randy knows his contact point. If you don't know yours, you better figure it out. And it will vary a little bit depending on your grip and your style of play a little bit. But you do definitely want to know where those contact points are for medium and then we'll get into the lows and the highs later on. But without that knowledge, you'll be mistiming balls and we'll be able to control the ball and play with the confidence that you'd like to. So that kind of wraps it up. We've got the key elements that the non-dominant hand is really managing the forehand, and around that we have a knowledge of a contact point that enables us to time onto the ball with a professional movement. I hope you really enjoyed and benefited from this lesson today on the modern forehand. Please give us a like, subscribe to our YouTube channel if you've not done so already, leave your comments down below, and let us know if you have a particular subject you'd like us to cover in a future video. We'd be happy to do that. And while you're here, please click on the link in the description down below, gain access to our free library of content on the modern forehand and every stroke in the game. And in our library, we cover all the foundational principles you need to master to achieve your full potential in the sport of tennis. And while you're on our website, please have a browse around. We have additional free lessons. We also have a, a VIP membership program and a, a highly regarded, world-renowned Sur Foundation course. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.